Today in the Messenger Smackdown ring, we have SMS, Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, iMessage, Wicker, Telegram, XMPP, Session, 3 month Signal, Matrix, and of course, Briar. This video is not designed to give you an answer to what the best messenger is for you. We already did that in a recent video that'll be in a description. This one is meant to be an objective comparison of all options you have using factual, objective, and verifiable pieces of information. If you're convinced Signal is an NSA honeypot, tough shit. There's no proof, so it won't be in this video, but you can speculate at home all you want. All right, so we're over here to CritPad, and we're gonna go through this as quick as possible. If you see the timestamps of the video, you'll see that it's not as long as it looks. We're gonna go through this really quick, and I want you to get a general idea of how good these services are stacked against each other. In terms of funding and companies, I don't feel like there's necessarily a good situation. I do trust these open standards the most. So you're gonna have uh, SMS, assuming that's like the one, the only thing I'm for SMS for is it is an open standard. You also have XMPP and you also have Matrix. Those three are gonna be your open standards. Everything else is either a project or a company or a nonprofit. The only thing to watch out for is the big tech companies, Facebook, Apple, and Amazon, who manage Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, iMessage, and Wicker. Yes, WhatsApp is Facebook. We're gonna get that established right now. Up next, there's end-to-end -end encryption. End-to-end -end encryption is going to ensure that only you and the person you're talking to or people you're talking to can view the messages. This means that even if the company wants to gain access to your messages, they physically can't do that. Everything here has an end-to-end -end encryption option except SMS. SMS is the green bubbles that you send on your iPhones. Um, definitely the only option that doesn't have end-to-end -end encryption. Everything else has technically an option for it, including Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp does it, iMessage, Wicker, Telegram, XMPP needs to be configured. We'll talk about that soon. And then you have everything else that also does end-to-end -end encryption. The bigger question on my plate though is end-to-end -end encryption by default. Um, this means that no matter what, if you open a conversation, it's going to be end-to-end -end encrypted and there's no possibility for user error. This is extremely important and it's a very underrated thing about end-to-end -end encryption. Encryption. SMS does not have end-to-end -end encryption at all. Facebook Messenger does not do it by default. Uh, WhatsApp, iMessage does have it by default. Wicker does as well. Telegram does not and XMPP does not. Now XMPP can be configured in two ways to use Omemo or PGP. Um, both of them are decent options, though it seems like Omemo is definitely the better way to go from a security point of view. And then every other provider here, Session 3, Ma, Signal, Matrix, Briar, they all have end-to-end -end encryption by default. Up next, we're gonna talk about open source. This is going to tell us whether or not the code is publicly available. We're gonna look at the clients and cryptography, as well as maybe an API, as well as servers. These are all things that can be made um, open source, and you're gonna see that it's a little bit different for each person. SMS is just an open standard. It doesn't quite apply to SMS. Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, and iMessage are not open source in really any capacity. Wicker's crypto code is open source. That's it. The clients nor the server are open source, but at least their cryptography is. Telegram has open source clients and API, but their server code is closed source. XMPP isn't standard, and that aspect of it is, and the most XMPP clients, which is how you interact with XMPP, are open source, but technically nothing is stopping there from being a proprietary XMPP client, and I'm sure some of them do exist. Session is open source. Threema is clients only open source. That's kind of a misconception. I see people tout that Threema is open source. Their clients are not the server. Um, so it's kind of a similar situation to Telegram. Signal, Matrix, and Briar, all open source. A transparency report is going to be a messenger's ability to report any law enforcement requests or any kind of information they've had to hand over for whatever type of um, investigations or anything like that. It's really gonna vary here. So believe it or not, Facebook does have a transparency report as well as Apple. You can find those on their website and it does include this kind of data and they are more or less transparent about the information they give up. As well as Wicker through Amazon, Telegram does not have a transparency report. I wish they did. Uh, XMPP is an open standard. So again, there's not really a transparency report for this because it's just something that anyone can hook into and utilize. Um, Session does, Threema does, Signal does. Matrix is also an open standard. Um, I don't know if Element and Matrix.org through their home server have their own transparency reports, but I don't really expect them to have one. Either way, it wouldn't really fit in this classification because we're not specifically looking at Element. We're just looking at Matrix the standard. Briar's peer-to-peer, -peer, so um, 
it, this doesn't really apply to it, which is why it has these dashes. So the dashes apply to Matrix, Briar, XMPP, and SMS because these aren't really situations where a transparency report would even, you can even have one because there's no one to, I guess, get the information from. Information needed to register. Now, obviously the goal is for there to be zero information and there are some uh, options here that are like that. The worst ones, Facebook and Apple require those uh, respective accounts. So you need a Facebook account and you need an iCloud account. SMS, WhatsApp, Telegram, and Signal all require a phone number, which isn't the end of the world, but is definitely kind of a concern for a lot of people, which is very understandable. You can always use VOIP or secondary numbers, that's always at your disposal, but just keep in mind that that phone number can really be a big thing to hand over, which is one of the biggest criticisms towards Signal, and we'll talk about that later. And then as for the best options, Wicker, XMPP, Session, Threema, Matrix, and Briar don't require anything. Um, now this does vary a little bit. Some Matrix home servers, again, Matrix is a standard. You, uh, there's different home servers that you can utilize when you sign up. Some home servers do require an email um, and some require nothing, but you can find a way to get a Matrix account. You can set up your own Matrix server and you can make it require nothing. It doesn't take that much effort to find something like this. One more thing I'd like to say, this is not, I didn't want to make this its own category because it wasn't worth it, but Signal requires a phone number and it's also the only way to add contacts. Meaning, if I want to add you to Signal, I have to get your phone number, I have to know your phone number. Telegram, on the other hand, you can have a username so you're only interacting with people via an alias. So you and I can talk on Telegram without you needing to know my phone number, which Signal does not do that. Signal only allows you to add people through their phone number. As of today, though, they have pretty much publicly announced that they will be improving on that in the future, so you can hide your phone number to external contacts, which I'm very excited for, and I hope they do soon. Okay, now the big, 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 big discussion. Metadata. So everything here, for the most part, has end-to-end -end encryption. Great. Um, the big problem, though, and this is why WhatsApp is heavily criticized, is there's still metadata collection. When two people are talking to each other, where they're talking to each other, who each individual's contacts are, is enough information to tie a huge part of the conversation together, and it still reveals a lot of information about each individual. That's why metadata is so important. So, Facebook Messenger, absolutely. WhatsApp, absolutely. And iMessage, absolutely. And when I say everything, I mean pretty much everything. Like, what device you're on, the IP address, the time that you're talking to each other, maybe even like they might be able to get the size of the attachments that are sent but not actually have access to the attachments i would just assume everything related to your conversation can be read with the exception of just the raw message content itself and i know re recently people are even accusing whatsapp of not doing that um but that's still unfolding so i don't want to make any assumptions and i'm going to stick to what the facts are today Wicker has some metadata collection. Uh, it's, it's better than the other options, but it still has some metadata collection. Telegram does as well. XMPP does have metadata collection, though um, if you are running your own server, which you can do fairly easily with XMPP, that metadata collection is going through you. So you at least have control of your metadata, or at least you have that option. Um, session. Uh, it prides itself on having, for the most part, very little, if not no, metadata, which is very impressive. Threema does have some metadata. Signal has minor metadata. I'd say, like, it's Signal and then Session. Session probably has the best based on what I could find. I would definitely like people to fact check me and add their information if I'm wrong about anything because this is based on just my research that I did. Matrix does have some relatively severe metadata problems, <laughs> which is kind of a problem with Matrix. I don't know, I'd like to get a better answer on metadata collection from Briar. I don't think it would be built in a way where metadata would be a genuine issue, whereas some of these other platforms need to actively deal with the metadata problem. All right, now we're gonna move on to the second row. This is a very big point of discussion, especially in regards to Apple. When you do a cloud backup on your phone, which by the way, I don't recommend, but a lot of people do. If you're on Android, it's most likely backing up to Google Drive. If you're on an iPhone, it's most likely backing up to iCloud, right? It's just your automatic backup that's going to the cloud. Now, the big problem here, iMessage, for example, is end-to-end -end encrypted, right? Only you and I, when we use iMessage, can see each other's messages. Awesome. But if Apple decides to do a backup of my phone, that backup is not end-to-end -end encrypted. Meaning, and this does happen, Apple can access the backup, then access the messages through that backup. So even though the messages were sent with end-to-end -end encryption, they are still able to get essentially a copy of my device 
with the messages inside the copy, and then they can read the messages from there. And this is actually how a lot of um, law enforcement requests are done, and that's how Apple's able to hand over messages to law enforcement. It's not because they broke iMessage, it's not because iMessage isn't end-to-end -end encrypted, it's because the backups of iMessage are uploaded with no end-to-end -end encryption. And that's why this is a major point of discussion. So you're gonna see here, iMessage is a very clear no. They do not encrypt their cloud backups. That's one of the biggest criticisms of iMessage and Apple, and it's why I recommend people don't use use cloud backups through iCloud. The best way to deal with this is to plug in your Apple devices into iTunes manually and then select the encrypted backup option inside of iTunes and you do a local backup to your computer. Um, Facebook Messenger is kind of unclear. WhatsApp is unclear. I wasn't able to get a clear answer. Wicker omits itself from cloud backups which is good. I was unclear on an answer about Telegram as well as XMPP, though I can say XMPP is probably gonna vary on the client you choose. Session, I got this information from the secure messaging chart, which I'll also leave down below if you want a more thorough chart, but they claimed that there are no encrypted cloud backups via Session, which is a giant oversight if this is true and it's something Session should work on. Either they should omit themselves from being in a cloud backup or they should figure out a solution where that data is end-to-end -end encrypted in some fashion. Threema does deal with this very well. In fact, they're the only yes on this list. Um, Signal excludes itself from cloud backups, so you don't have to worry about it via Signal. Matrix is likely gonna rely on the client, and I wasn't able to get a clear answer either way. Um, and Briar also omits itself from cloud backups. Up next, this kind of goes under metadata a little bit, but I did wanna talk about timestamp and IP logs. Yes with Facebook Messenger, yes to WhatsApp, yes to iMessage, okay? Um, Wicker is a no, they do not collect this information. Telegram does. Uh, XMPP is, again, based on the server and based on the information they're collecting. I would assume it does, though, unless you have full control of your own server. Session does not, Threema does not, Signal does not. Matrix is the same situation as XMPP, except I think it almost definitely does, um, depending on the home server, but I would assume it does. And then there's Briar, which does not because there's no central party for Briar. It's just you directly talking to someone else. Awesome. Security audits. So this is when an external party is gonna go in and go, hey, you got some issues, or hey, you're, you're doing really well. Facebook Messenger has not, WhatsApp has not, iMessage has not. Wicker has done a security audit, which is good. Telegram has as well. XMPP has more or less. Now what I mean by that is XMPP, um, there is the standard, um, but I think ChatSecure, which is a client, has done their own security audit, which is cool. So there might be one or two clients that have done their own security audit. And then I'm going to switch tabs over here. The one thing I did want to check out was Omemo, and it is the cryptography that's used. It's the recommended cryptography when you're using XMPP, which again is not on by default and you have to enable this. But there is a security audit done on Omemo which is cool. And so I consider that like more or less a yes for XMPP, but just be aware that XMPP is so decentralized that things are really gonna vary. You could be using a heavily insecure client that might not be implementing a memo properly, which kind of invalidates the whole thing with a memo. Session has done one, Threema has done one, Signal has done one, Matrix has more or less as well. Um, the main thing I was looking for was for their OM end-to-end -end encryption, uh, which is what they use for their end-to-end -end encryption, they use OM, and they have done one which is here, you can read the whole thing online if you want to. So there is that, and I do consider that at least a more or less option. Uh, I would like to see, I don't believe Element has done a security audit on their client. Um, I think audits are good, they're not really required, but it's just good to see people go above and beyond to see if they can catch mistakes, and that's really what this speaks to. It's like, do you wanna go above and beyond? Um, and then Briar has done one, which is awesome. Now we're gonna talk about onion routing. So onion routing implies going through Tor or something like Tor in order to anonymize the data or the people talking. So Session does do onion routing and eventually I believe they're trying to move over to their who, Oxen network. I hope I got that right. It used to be the Loki net and I believe they rebranded to Oxen or Oxen's an aspect of Loki net. I don't know, I forgot the details, but long story short, it is currently Tor based. Uh, there is onion routing and then Briar. Briar does also use Tor to make things peer-to-peer -peer, and it makes sure to anonymize its users in that way, which is awesome. Next up, destructing messages. So this is going to be a situation where you can set a predetermined time for the messages to clear out in a chat. SMS, of course, no, though technically you could likely get an SMS client that does do this, but I mean, there's no guarantee of the data removal because there's not even end-to-end -end encryption. So you might delete it from your device, but your carrier still has the messages as well as the other person's SMS client. So I would say no. Facebook Messenger does have destructing messages. WhatsApp has it as well. iMessage does not. 
uh, Wicker does, Telegram does, XMPP does not. Um, there are some like <laughs> people who have tried, and I know I did find some extensions online uh, from people that, that integrate with their clients. I did find some things, but officially, no, it is not in XMPP, and it's unlikely you're gonna find a solution that's gonna work between two people. Session does have it, Threema does not, Signal does, Matrix does not, I w really wish Matrix did, and then Briar, it's a little confusing. So I haven't used Briar personally in a long time. I don't think they used to have it back when I tested it out. And I did find that they have it here inside of their GitLab. So they worked on it. It looked like all the ongoing issues and unstarted issues are done and all the completed issues are closed. I don't know if this has made it in, but long story short, Briar's either working on this or it's already inside of Briar. I just don't have the means to test it before this video goes out, unfortunately. But um, either way, it seems like Briar's working on it, which is very cool, and it might already be in there. So let's talk about the general concerns. SMS, no security. Just have that assumption about SMS. If you send anything over SMS, assume it's public information because it's practically what's happening. With Facebook, the main complaints is you need a Facebook account, which is already a bad situation. There's no default end-to-end -end encryption. It's proprietary, and there's a ton of metadata collection that is tied to your Facebook account. Not good. You do not want to be on Facebook Messenger, but if you are on it for whatever reason, at the very least, enable the whatever they call it, secret chats that are then end-to-end -end encrypted. I think they call them secret chats. WhatsApp, pretty much the same boat. Um, it is Facebook run. It has a phone number requirement. It is proprietary, and they collect a lot of metadata. iMessage, it is run by a big tech company. It does require an iCloud account. It is proprietary. It does collect metadata and it does have unsafe cloud backups, which might just totally get rid of the need for even end-to-end -end encryption because they decided not to do end-to-end -end encrypted backups, which is fun. Wicker, it is managed by a big tech company, Amazon, and it is mostly proprietary. Those are the big issues with Wicker, but actually it didn't come out too bad. Telegram, no default end-to-end -end encryption. It does have a phone number requirement, closed server, and it does have some metadata collection. XMPP, no default end-to-end -end encryption, it must be configured, um, and it does have metadata issues, and you also do have to trust whatever server you're connecting to to some extent. Session, no encrypted cloud backups. Though again, that's somewhat unconfirmed, that's based on the secure messaging chart I was taking a look at. Threema, closed source server, and some metadata collection. Signal, again, it's that phone number requirement, that's really the only issue with Signal to this day. Matrix, it's the metadata. Metadata is the biggest problem with Matrix to this day. And then Briar, there's really no issues with Briar. Uh, I couldn't find any issues. There's nothing for me to criticize Briar for. It, it does a really solid job based on like on every metric for the most part. I don't want to tell you what service to use, but I hope that um, the general fact-based look on everything, as well as maybe my thoughts towards some of the things, will help you make your decision. And now we're gonna go back to the, um, we're gonna flip the camera. <laughs> So of all the options we covered today, which was your favorite and why? Leave a comment below to flex your favorite messenger and brag to everyone else about what you use. This video took a lot of time to put together and it's available completely for free to help you keep your data safe. If you enjoy our content, be sure to check out our Patreon for exclusive perks and other fun things. And we also have other support methods like Monero on our website as well. Thanks for tuning in today. Hope you liked it. Share it around with your friends, family, and communities if you loved it. And we'll see you next time on TechLore.